This episode may contain content of a graphic nature, including descriptions of physical and sexual violence against adults, children, and animals. Listener discretion is advised. Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya. And I'm Talia. And we are Crimes and Consequences, a true crime podcast. Talia. Hi, Tanya. How are you today? I'm doing splendid. Thanks for asking. And you? I am splendid, too. We're just everybody's splendid, (laughs) which is great. I hope all of our listeners are splendid. Me, too. Because I'm not really. (laughs) We're getting close to Christmas. I don't know. Hopefully, everyone's in the Christmas spirit, if you celebrate Christmas. I'm in the true crime spirit. Always. So let's get rocking. All right. Before I start this week's episode, I would just like to remind everyone to hit subscribe or follow on whatever podcast app you're listening to us on. And today's episode was suggested recently by a member. Her name is Shonda W. So thank you, Shonda. Thanks, Shonda. For those that don't know, Shonda is a Patreon member. Yes. Yes. And by being a Patreon member, she helps support us and gets lots of perks. Yes. Lots of extra episodes, commercial free. Early releases. You might want to check it out yeah. if you haven't. And we'll tell you more at the end of the episode. But now, back to true crime. I'm going to tell you today about the disappearance of Molly Miller and Colt Haynes. At the time of her disappearance, Molly was 17 years old, and I believe she was going to be starting her junior year of high school in the fall. She was described as being a very outspoken girl who would stand up for anyone and everyone who had been wronged. She had a very loving relationship with her family and had grown up in Wilson, Oklahoma. What year is this? This is 2013. Oh, okay. So it's just recent. She loved playing softball and aspired to be a nurse after graduating from high school. Before her disappearance, however, Molly began to skip school, argue a lot with her mom, and she started to mess around a little bit with drugs. There wasn't a lot to do in Wilson. It was pretty much a rural town. I mean, it wasn't a big city or anything. So experimenting with drugs and alcohol seemed to be what a lot of the young people did. There's really nothing to do in Wilson. Yeah, that's kind of why I grew up in Allegan, Mm -hmm. Michigan. There's nothing to do. Nothing to do. Nothing to do. Her family and close friends tried to steer her in the right direction, but this just seemed to make her rebel more. A week before she disappeared, she met 21-year-old Colt Haynes. They started secretly dating, and very few people knew. That they were together. It was only a week. Right. Colt was described as a good person, but he had some troubles. He had been arrested for making meth in the past and did use drugs. Making meth in the past? Yes. That's some troubles. At 21. I, I mean, know, I thing. don't even know how to make it. <laughs> it sounds, that sounds bad. Yes. At the time of his disappearance, he was supposed to be in a rehab program for his drug use. He had also been on probation, and his probation officer ended up having a warrant issued for his arrest on July 18th, which was about two weeks after he and Molly disappeared. He also had a son with an ex-girlfriend. And because he's 21, I can't imagine the son was very old, probably just a couple years old at the most. So on July 7th, 2013, where all of this takes place, Molly was hanging out at Colt's house. Rumor has it that it was a house party. At some point, one of Colt's quote-unquote friends, his name was James Con Nip, and I'm going to call him Con in this episode because that's the name he went by, he showed up to the house. Molly knew him, but she wasn't necessarily friends with him, but she had grown up knowing him pretty much her whole life. Like, they knew of each other. That type of relationship is a small town. And I had said that Colt and Con were friends, but... They really had a tumultuous relationship because Khan had dated Colt's baby mama oh, after, oh. after they broke up. They really didn't like each other. That sounds like a whole bunch of drama. It does, doesn't it? And Khan, just to let everyone know, is around Colt's age, so he's got to be around 21. At the time he arrived to the party, Khan was driving a 2012 Honda Accord that belonged to his current girlfriend, not Colt's baby mama. 
People who were interviewed after Molly and Colt disappeared said that at some point, Molly and Colt left the house with Khan. No one knows why, considering Molly wasn't really friends with him and Colt didn't like him. But some people think maybe it had to do with scoring some drugs. I'm just saying that's mere speculation. It's not a fact. So it hasn't been confirmed. At 10.30 p.m., the three of them, Khan, Colt, and Molly, were seen at a convenience store parking lot in Wilson. There were some police officers there, too, and Khan decided to fuck around with them, and he started doing donuts and spraying them with the rocks in the parking lot. What? Why would you do that? (sighs) You want trouble. I know. This kid wants trouble. He sped out of the parking lot, seeming to taunt the officers to come chase him, which they did. The chase went through downtown Wilson, and once Khan hit Highway 76, he slammed on the gas pedal. He hit speeds of about 120 miles an hour, and he turned off his headlights to try to evade the cops. He was headed to Love County. They were currently in Carter County, so they share a border. Love County and Carter County. Love County. Love County. That's lovely. Sounds like a nice place. And just so everyone knows, Love County is about 20 minutes away from the convenience store, but it could be a little bit less because he was going so fast. With no lights on. With no lights on. I know, that's scary. During the chase, Carter County officers called ahead to Love County and made them aware of the chase and said that they needed backup. Once the car crossed into Love County, the sheriff ended up calling off the chase and said it was just getting too dangerous to continue. It's not known exactly where the chase ended, but it's thought to have ended either on Long Hollow Road, and this is going to be an important road, or near it. Long Hollow? Long Hollow. The car chase was never properly reported, and that includes that it was called off. So there wasn't an official police report made. And it probably has to do with the fact that Khan's cousin was the Love County Sheriff, Joe Russell. Also, the land that borders Long Hollow Road is owned by the Nip family. So he's in his familiar territory. His cousin is the sheriff of the county. And he probably gets away with a lot of bullshit. Right. Something went haywire after the chase was called off because Khan ended up making it home safely. But as I told you, Colt and Molly disappeared. Khan totally denies that he was ever with Molly and Colt. And he has no idea what happened to them. Were they seen at the convenience store? Yeah. And they were in the car when it sped away with Khan. How does one say they weren't with me? He insists. Okay. Okay. So they were at the convenience store at about 1030. I'm thinking if they took the 20 minutes to get to Love County, that's 20 minutes. So it's not even 11 p.m. yet. Around 1247 a.m., a call from Molly's phone comes into Love County 911. When the dispatcher answered it, there was just silence on the other end, and the dispatcher said she couldn't hear anything else. The call lasted only five seconds. The dispatcher called the number back, and there was no answer. When that happens, the sheriff's office has a protocol that when a call comes in, they hang up, you call them back and they don't answer, that officers are dispatched to the location just to make sure that there's like no domestic violence or a kidnapping situation. Could they ping it that easily now? They pinged it, yes. They knew exactly where her call came from. That seems odd to me because a lot of stories that I've seen on TV and all that, it takes forever to figure out where they're at and they don't seem to ever have a narrow area. And I thought that too. So I was really amazed that they got this information so accurately and so soon. But just go with it. (laughs) Okay. Sounds good. Sounds reasonable. Despite the protocol that they have where they send out the officers, no one was dispatched. The ping originated in an area of uninhabited land between Long Hollow Road and another road named Pike Road. It's kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Just there's like woods and creeks and trails and stuff like that. So just picture, you know... Nothing's built on it, et cetera. It's Oklahoma. It's Oklahoma. After that happened, the call from Molly's phone, 12 more calls from her phone came into 911 like rapid fire, but all the calls were either dropped or they were ended by someone. 
Then over 30 separate people called 911 to say Molly and Colt contacted them and said that they had been dropped off in the middle of nowhere by Khan. They had no idea where they were, but they were in a wooded area somewhere off, somewhere off Oswald Road, which is between Pike and Long Hollow Roads. They said they needed water and a ride home. So what's happening is they're in the middle of these woods. They both have their cell phones on them, and they are contacting friends. Did they explain what happened? Yeah, they said they were just dropped off in the middle of nowhere by Khan, and we need some water. We really need someone to come help us. So the friends, like I said, there was over 30 people. Call 911 to try to get them help. Did they explain why they were with Khan? No. A few friends tried to search for Molly and Colt on their own, with one of them being the boyfriend of a friend of Molly's. He was using her phone, and Molly called the number that evening 33 times. So I believe what happened was he went out to look for them, but ended up on a road 10 miles away from where they were known to have been with the ping. And the 33 calls were probably like a back and forth between he and Molly trying to narrow down their location or get him closer to them or something. And I have to tell you too, this area, a lot of dirt roads and it's pitch black. There's no light posts or anything. So they're in the middle of the woods, in the dark, not sure exactly where they're at. And someone did try to come find them, but was unsuccessful. During those conversations while he's looking for her, are they talking during those phone calls? I believe so, because the theory is they were talking to one another to try and narrow down where Molly and Colt were. So I'm thinking, you know, oh, we're, or he'll say, I'm at such and such road or whatever, and maybe they hang up, starts looking, Molly calls back. That's what I'm thinking is happening. They're having conversation. And Colt's calling people too? Yes. Several hours later... At 6.30 a.m., Molly talked to one of her close friends, and she asked him if he could come and pick her and Colt up, but the friend said he couldn't come out to get her. At 9.33 a.m., she called another friend who said they couldn't help. While Molly was calling her friends for help, Colt was also calling his friends. He told friends that he was now badly injured. He said he had climbed up a tree and fell out of it. When he fell, he broke his ankle and a bone was sticking out of his leg now. Oh, my. Whoa. I know. And I was thinking maybe he climbed the tree to kind of see where they were, maybe? Yeah. Who knows what the hell's going on? I know. I, I, I don't. I don't either. And he also told friends he was lying in a creek bed, unable to move, and coughing up blood. Wow. So he's in bad shape. Fuck. I know. Maybe he has some internal bleeding from the fall, too. I don't know. So, as I say, Colt's making these calls. And four of his friends decide they're going to go and try and look for him and Molly. Why don't some of these friends call the police and just insist and call Molly's parents? I don't know, right? At this point, it's been, what, 10 hours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to be probably close to 10 hours. Colt's friends came out to the area where they believed that Colt and Molly were. And they spent hours going up and down Pike Road. They were blowing their car horn while they were on the phone with Colt, but Colt said he couldn't hear the horn. The friends obviously never found Colt and Molly, and it's believed that where Colt and Molly were had to be smack dab in the middle of this land, and they were so far deep into the woods that they just couldn't hear the horns from the road. At this point, given what Colt has said about his injuries... I mean, there should have been this massive helicopter search and police and EMT. Mm -hmm. and At least right now, it's daylight, right? There was a creek that ran through the middle of the land, so it's possible that's what they were along. Like, that might have been the creek that he was referring to. His friends decided to search down Long Hollow Road, and that's where they ran into Khan. Khan's back. Khan's back. They asked him... You know, where did you drop Molly and Colt off? Because they really need help. And Khan kept up the story that he just acted like he had no idea what they were talking about. He basically told them, oh, you don't need to look for Molly and Colt because they're just messing around with you. They're just saying some bullshit. However, 
One of the friends had Colt on the phone at the time. Aw, shit. And Colt heard everything. He heard Khan denying being with Molly and he. So he said to his friend, I want to talk to Khan. Oh, wow. I know. This is a crazy story. The friend gave Khan the phone and Khan walked away to talk to Colt, speaking in a really low voice so the friends didn't get to hear what he said. The conversation was brief. And after Khan hung up, he asked the guys if they remembered where the stolen Mustang was. Apparently, they had all been involved in some car theft ring, maybe. These guys knew about this stolen Mustang. And it was in some of the woods on Khan's aunt's property. What happened next? Whether the friends went out and found the Mustang, whether Khan went with them to find the Mustang, it's unknown. So I don't know if that area got searched or not. So on Khan's aunt's property is a stolen Mustang and Colt's friends know about it. Yes. I'm with you. Okay. Molly's last call made from her cell phone was the one I mentioned at 933. And by 939 a.m., her phone was either switched off or the battery died. Within 15 minutes of that, Colt's phone was either switched off or had a dead battery too. The timing of their phones dying or being switched off to me seemed really suspicious because it was so close together. Like, what are the odds that my phone is going to die within 15 minutes of your phone, right? So I feel like that is an indicator that some foul play is going on. But again, my speculation. And it's after Cole had a private conversation with Khan. Yes. I know nothing of this case. So (laughs) I just want to make that clear to everybody. I know. I had never heard of it. So I'm so glad that Shonda recommended it. In Wilson, so the town where Molly lives, word began to spread that she and Colt had disappeared after a car chase with Khan, and everyone knew Khan was trouble. He was known for stealing cars, going on high-speed chases into Love County, and then abandoning the cars on his family land. This, so this, this wasn't the first time he did what he did the night before. And everybody knew. Molly was reported missing right away by her family in Carter County. Her family also contacted Love County to make a missing persons report. And what happened next is just crazy to me because the dispatcher who took the call from Molly's family then took the phone to Sheriff Joe Russell, who is Khan's cousin. And he said, it's not my problem. And he wasn't going to file a missing persons report in Love County. What do you mean he took the phone to him? Oh, you think she might have transferred it? Okay. The dispatcher was disturbed by this because she's like, this girl and guy are missing and supposedly went missing in Love County. And And she's trying to transfer a call to the sheriff who doesn't want any part of it. Right. So what she ended up doing was she took all of the info she gathered and she made flyers personally and posted them around the police station. Good for her. To at least make the other officers aware she was fired from her job two months later. No. Yes, and it was, and it is believed she was fired because of this, that she went behind the sheriff's back. She's trying to do the right thing. Originally, in Wilson, the police chief, his name is Felix Hernandez, he worked on the case and treated it as a runaway, that Molly ran away. Molly's case didn't meet the criteria to have an Amber Alert issued, Chief Hernandez did authorize some ground and air searches of the area where they were last seen, and he interviewed Khan. The interview with Khan didn't produce anything he could use, and Khan kept up the story about he wasn't with Colt and Molly, and he had no idea what happened to them. But phone records show he lied to Chief Hernandez because the night of the high-speed chase where he got separated from Colt And Molly, his phone pinged in the same area that their phones did. So he was there, or at least his phone was. But it appears to me that nothing was done with that information. Just kind of left out there. So the rumor mill is going in Wilson. And so a lot of rumors were coming up about Molly and Colt being dead and their bodies were in places like in Texas. The rumors were followed up on, but nothing panned out. Two weeks after Molly and Colt disappeared, the Honda was found, the one that Khan was driving, his girlfriend's Honda. It was found in a field off of Oswald Road, pretty much in the same area where the chase probably ended. It had $18,000 worth of damage. 
and it looked like it had been driven through several barbed wire fences. It was also about 100 yards away from where Colt and Molly's phone had pinged. That is just so fucking weird. Isn't it? And what a weirdo who just takes cars, goes on high-speed chases, and ditches them. I know, it's just so, so weird. It's so weird. And how did his ass get home? That's what I would like to know, right? It's dark. He's it's, in the middle of nowhere. I know, did he leave the car there that night and walk home? I don't know where he lives, but I don't know. I would like to look at all of his phone records. <laughs> I know, I want night. them immediately. For that night, I will analyze them. <laughs> The car was searched, and Chief Hernandez and Wilson said it didn't show any signs of foul play, so there probably wasn't any blood or anything like that in the car. It's believed that Colt and Molly left the car shortly after the chase ended, but it's not known whether they left voluntarily or were forced out of the car by Khan. So did they find any evidence linking the couple to that Honda? No. There wasn't anything found in there. But did they do a whole forensic testing? That's a good question. I'm going to say no. I'm I'm going to guess guess no no as well. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm going to guess no. On September 1st, two months after Molly and Colt were last seen, the company EquiSearch did a search up and down Long Hollow Road, and they ran into Khan's aunt. They asked her if they could search the land, and she told them that Khan's grandfather, I'm not clear if it's her dad or an uncle, He was the head of the family, and they would have to ask him for permission. They went to the grandfather's home, and he refused to let them search without a search warrant. What? I know. While this was going on, Khan and his dad show up. The people from EquiSearch asked Khan if he would speak to them, and he agreed. Their conversation lasted about a half an hour, and he continued to deny everything. But they confronted him with the phone records, and he said, I don't want to go to jail. Okay, then tell the truth. Right. One of Molly's aunts, her Aunt Paula, was there with EquiSearch, and she pushed Khan for more information. She told him, look, we've come to terms with the fact that Molly is probably dead. We just want to know where she is so we can give her a proper burial. After Aunt Paula said that, Khan teared up and sat down and was rocking himself back and forth. But before I tell you more about what Khan had to say. We're going to take a break. So as I just mentioned, Khan teared up, he sat down, he's rocking himself back and forth. And the aunt said, look, I'll pay you for information if you could just tell me where Molly is. He told her, quote, this isn't about the money, end quote. And that was all he would say. But it became obvious that he knew more than he was willing to share. On July 16th and 17th, so I'm going back in time a little bit. This was about two weeks, 11 days, 12 days after Colt and Molly disappeared. In two separate conversations, so one on the 16th and one on the 17th, Khan told his sister that he was going to go to jail for murder. At first, she didn't believe him in that conversation on the 16th, but she did believe him when he mentioned it again the next day. Also, something weird about his sister was when she wrote out her statement at the police station, she drew a heart next to the word murder. That's really strange. Isn't that weird? So she went to the police after he said it twice, Mm -hmm. made a statement, and put a heart by it? Yes. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. The OSBI, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, so the state's equivalent to the federal FBI, they got involved, and the family also hired a PI named Philip Klein. Philip talked to everyone that Molly and Colt had called the night they disappeared. OSBI demanded information from Love County about the case, and the info that was handed over to them was kind of a joke. It suggested that Molly probably ran away with someone. So yeah, sure, she's on this high-speed chase, and she ends up in the woods and just runs off with some guy that shows up. Is that just notes from some detective that got handed over that said that, I wonder? I wonder. And I'm not sure who said it, but that was in the case files in Love County. OSBI went through every tip that came in, but again, nothing panned out and they wondered if some of the tips had been fabricated. An informant came forward in 2014 that led to a search warrant being issued to search the Nip family land. The informant said that he was close to Khan and he had helped Khan bury Molly and Colt's bodies near a shed on the property. 
When it came time for the informant to show authorities the area that he was talking about, he told them he made it all up. The FBI and U.S. Marshals were involved in this, and they were really relying on the information provided by the informant. And now that he was retracting a statement, the search warrant was void. I wonder how much property they had. They must have had a lot of property. Yeah, I didn't find like a measurement exactly, but it is a very large piece of property and that has nothing on it. Except cars. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) And probably a shed. I don't know. The next day after the informant says, you know, I made it all up, the case was reclassified as a homicide. So it finally went from missing persons to a homicide. And that was about a year after they disappeared? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. The FBI got involved on this case at some point. And so they were going over the records. And when they found out that the car chase wasn't reported and all the neighbors confirmed that their fences and gates had been destroyed that night, remember the car had barbed wire scratches, and the FBI found out that sheriff's office didn't do anything, they tried to build a case against Khan. Khan was arrested in January 2014, and he was actually taken in by his cousin, Sheriff Joe Russell. He was charged with endangering others while eluding police, and that referred to Colt and Molly, assault with a deadly weapon, and unauthorized use of a vehicle. Is the vehicle the deadly weapon? Yes. And it wasn't his car, remember, it was his girlfriend's. The last charge referred to the fact that Khan was still stealing cars and going on high-speed chases and had been in one right before he was arrested. So I think that was unrelated to Colt and Molly. He did it again? He did it again. What an asshole! It's like he's compelled to do this. During that last chase, Colt had put down a handmade speed bump on Long Hollow Road. He what? Was, and he used to do this a lot, apparently, and the, because the city had told him at some point that he needed to take these homemade speed bumps away. Why doesn't he just go two tracking in the woods, man? I don't Plenty understand. Of bumps there. What is this? this? He really has nothing to do. Has he got like two brain cells? <laughs> I'm embarrassed for him. Seriously. That January when he was arrested, because he had gone on this high-speed chase, remember? Yes. A police car hit the speed bump, and the officer's car got launched into a tree. So is he doing these speed bumps to fuck with police? Yes. Oh, Jesus. He doesn't seem to care. The officer survived, but it appears Khan was deliberately trying to harm the cops, like you said. You know, he just doesn't care. On another note, Khan's girlfriend... She was charged with filing a false police report because she had reported her Honda missing. And I know that police found the Honda. Right. But they believe she knew Khan borrowed her car and she also knew that he abandoned it on his property. So she filed a claim with the police and then probably with insurance, right? Yes, she also filed, yes. One of the charges against her was she filed a false insurance claim. She was found guilty for both of these and she ended up being sentenced to three years in jail. For the charges against Khan, he was sentenced to 10 years in jail. Khan's whole incarceration was a joke, and it started from when he was first in jail before he was sent to serve out his sentence in prison. He was granted a lot of privileges that included allowing his family in his cell. Once when his family visited, they were allowed to go into the evidence room unattended with Khan, and I believe so this is still while he's at the county jail. What? I know. And it was the same evidence room where evidence from Colt's and Molly's case was stored. Is this Love or Carter County? Love. That's what I figured. Yes. I just had to ask to be sure. (laughs) I'm sure his cousin being the sheriff had absolutely nothing to do with it. Oh, no. Eight months after Molly and Colt disappeared, a 911 call came in that appeared to be a butt dial. In the recording of the conversation... There's some interesting things that are said. You can hear someone saying, you're fucking crazy. You're fucking tired. Something about a machete and Molly. A reference to a quote unquote dead girl. Someone saying something about, quote, shooting him in the mouth and you can put your finger through the hole, end quote. There were references to drugs. There was talk about a lake. And then you could hear splashes of water and a gunshot. What county was this 911 call? I believe this came in in Love County. Can they trace the call? (laughs) That's a good question. Because they can call back the number, right? They they didn't call back the number, but they did end up 
believing that the person who made the call was one of Khan's uncles. His name was Colby. Yeah, it was Love County because the dispatcher went to Sheriff Joe Russell about the call and he said something like, are they talking about Moxley Lake? Like he knew where they were. Moxley Lake is across from Long Hollow Road. The call wasn't properly reported and no one searched Moxley Lake. No one formally interviewed Uncle Colby either. So all these weird things are happening, right? And so the FBI finally decides they're going to start looking at Sheriff Joe Russell. They started doing a little investigation on him and also his son, Willie, who lived with him. Willie? Willie. They found out that Willie likely sold meth and that Joe knew about it. In 2015, they both were arrested when Willie participated in an undercover sting. Sheriff Joe was arrested? Yes. Wow. In the sting, a female agent from the FBI contacted Willie to do a drug deal. Willie had initially insisted that he didn't want to leave Love County to make the exchange, but he did finally agree to meet her in Carter County. See, that just shows you right then and there they feel protected in Love County. Yes, absolutely. I mean, his dad is the sheriff. Right. He sold the undercover agent an eight ball, and that led to his arrest. The FBI also found out that Joe had been allowing Willie to sell drugs and use his department vehicle while he was doing it. Nah, shit. So that Willie had access to the police scanners, which helped him stay out of trouble. This is like a crazy is this like a movie? movie. Yeah, this right. is seriously some sort of movie I'd watch on Netflix. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. I can't believe this is real life. Joe also allowed his home that he shared with Willie to be a place where Willie could store his drug supply. So they're in a lot of trouble. After Joe was arrested, witnesses began to come forward who said that Joe's house was a place that people came to party in as far back as 2011, maybe even earlier. Lots of people also said that Khan was involved and that Molly and Colt may have been started dabbling in drugs and that would be the connection to Khan, Joe, and Willie, possibly. These crimes weren't the only ones that Willie and Joe were participating in. This one is going to fucking knock your socks off. It's so crazy. They were harboring a fugitive. The sheriff. The sheriff and his son were harboring a fugitive. This person was a woman who had warrants for her arrest in four different counties, including Love County, and she was staying in their home. Joe and Willie told her that as long as she stayed with Willie and continued to have sex with him. I knew it. I knew that was going to be part of it that they wouldn't take her in on the warrant in Love County. Willie constantly threatened her, saying his dad was going to take her in if she tried to leave the house or turned him down when he wanted sex. He's got complete control over her. Yes, absolutely. This woman finally got sick of these threats and fled the house in 2015 and moved in with another man. Within the next two days, Joe went through with his promise and he put out the arrest warrant for her. He decided to personally get involved and went to find her himself. He ended up finding her at this man's house. He arrested her and the guy she was staying with. And ironically, the man was arrested for harboring a fugitive. (laughs) (laughs) You gotta be kidding me. What? What a fucking hypocrite. I know, right? Unbelievable. (sighs) It's insane. When Joe and Willie were arrested, other female victims came forward saying they were picked up on drug charges by Joe. He would arrest them, but he wouldn't book them. Instead, he took them to his house and forced them to dance and strip for him and his son in return for drugs. They gave these women drugs. What a purr. I know, it's gross. And what do you do if that's the sheriff? And who do you call for help? Exactly, who do you call for help? Nobody. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to trust any other police or sheriffs out there. Right. Joe ended up being charged in July 2016 with negligent duty and maladministration in relation to Molly and Colt's cases. He was also charged with maintaining a drug house and harboring a fugitive. While the charges were pending, he was suspended from his job as sheriff with pay. What? I know. With pay? With pay. A few months later in October 2016, a grand jury decided that Joe needed to be removed from his position immediately. But he ended up resigning before that could happen. For all of these charges, he ended up being only sentenced to probation. He pleaded no contest and had to pay a whopping $300 in fines. 
I wonder how much dirt he had on other people. Oh, my God. I think a lot. He was on house arrest for a time, but he didn't serve a day in jail. Okay. Khan only served four years out of his 10-year sentence, and both he and Joe are free as a bird today. They both continued to deny that they were involved in any way with Molly and Colt's disappearance. There are many theories about what happened. Some believe that Colt and Molly were drugged and then killed. One woman says she thinks Molly was taken to the shed after Colt was killed, and she was drugged, raped, and killed in the shed on the property. The FBI and OSBI say they're afraid that there's more victims buried on the land besides Colt and Molly. They believe that Joe Russell, Khan, and Willie use the land to dispose of witnesses who either saw too much related to their drug business or knew too much or something like that. I would give anything to go on that land. I know, right? Give me a oh shovel. my God. Colt and Molly's bodies have never been found. So the theories out there are that maybe they saw too much. I don't know. Something happened that night that, you know, caused them to see something and that they were killed. But it wasn't even that night. It was at least at 930 in the morning. I know. They were still alive. Something happened. Something happened after they spoke with Khan. Mm-hmm. Their phones died. That's right. Yeah. You know, I'm telling the story. You're so funny. You're like, that's right. That's right. I yes. remember that now. <sighs> Maybe you can. <laughs> Maybe what happened was... While Colt was on the phone with Khan, maybe he threatened him saying, I'm going to tell about whatever illegal thing that Khan was doing and Khan couldn't let him live. Or maybe Khan said, hey, buddy, I'll come get you. Maybe, right? Just stay there. Just relax. Don't don't say anything. I'll come get you. Right. Where are you at? Yeah, where are you at? And then 15 minutes later, the phones phones are are dead. dead. Allegedly. Allegedly, yes. There's been no trial about this case, but nobody's been arrested either. People also speculate that maybe the reason why Khan was so upset when Equisearch and Molly's aunt showed up to the grandfather's house was because he has a guilty conscience. And maybe he's feeling guilty because he knew Molly and Colt. In 2019, Uncle Colby was arrested on unrelated charges and was sentenced to 46 months. He's the one that they think butt dialed. Yes. During his incarceration, he came forward and said he knew for a fact that Molly's and Colt's bodies were in Moxley Lake. Remember I told you that during the call that was supposedly accidental? Yeah. That there was a gunshot. Yes. One theory is, is that the gunshot happened as sort of a signal. Like maybe when Khan's family went in the evidence room, they took some property Maybe it was being disposed of by Uncle Colby and whoever he was with in the lake. I don't know, clothes, phones, who knows, right? And that was a way to signal it was done? Yeah, and that was a way to signal it was done. I don't know. That's only a guess. Could just call on yourself. Oh, wait, you butt dialed Mm -hmm. 911. (laughs) Exactly. I don't know how you butt dial 911, but okay. Maybe that was a signal, or maybe it was a signal for something else. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just speculating. Maybe they just have a lot of beer in the woods and are shooting off yeah, guns. Yeah, maybe. Although they were talking about, yeah, pretty sure they were talking about Colt and Molly. There's speculation about what was stolen from the evidence room, if anything. Was it, like I said, their clothes or their cell phones? I would think there would have been a log. That's what I was just going to say. There's a log. Right. But maybe that was stolen or fabricated. Who knows? Because Sheriff Joe Russell didn't give a shit. They're left unattended. Who knows, right? I'm sure they had access to the forms that are used for the evidence room. Who knows? Again, I'm speculating. I don't know for sure. As of now, Moxley Lake has not been officially searched, but Equisearch and a company called Adventure with Purpose that is similar to EquiSearch, they have both been to Moxley Lake, but they haven't found anything. They didn't search the lake itself. They searched the area around the lake, and they did it with cadaver dogs. Moxley Lake is, at the deepest point, about 20 feet deep, so that's pretty deep. But for a lake, it's really not that deep. No. With the toy box killer, I think the lake was like 600 feet deep. Oh, shit, yeah, that's far. So nobody searched it officially. There's also a very shallow lake that is only about four to six feet deep. That was searched, and the reason it was searched was because it was in an area where Colt's phone had pinged. 
The land where Colt and Molly disappeared was eventually sold. The new owner is cooperating with authorities, but he thinks that the land is just so vast that a total search of the area is impossible, which I don't really agree with because if you just keep going at it, you're going to be able to eventually search the whole thing. So I don't know why he thinks that. The new owner found a bloody shirt hanging on a tree on the land, and it appeared to have belonged to a woman. He turned the shirt over to authorities. I'm not sure who. Love County, Carter County, the FBI, I the hope OSBI. Not Love County. But it's disappeared, and no one can find it to do any testing on it. There was an episode of Up and Vanished that aired on the Oxygen Channel where Sheriff Joe Russell, ex-Sheriff Joe Russell, was interviewed, kind of. Oh, shit. Kind of. It was involuntarily while he was on house arrest. He refused to talk about Molly and Colt and said every time he talks to the media, the media twists what he says to deliberately make him look bad because he's the victim. Yeah, because he doesn't look bad with all the shit he did. right. Really? The person who went on his land said, well, you know, the family really wants you to talk about it. And his reply was, quote, I don't really give a fuck about the family. Damn. End quote. He's yeah. hardcore. Yeah. And that really disturbed me considering he was a member of the police whose and job it is to help people. Yeah. And help they, victims of crimes. It's a 21-year-old and a 17-year-old I know. missing. And he doesn't give a fuck about the yeah. family? He said, I don't give a fuck about uh. the family. It just goes to show the type of person he is. Other people were interviewed by Up and Vanished, and they said that Joe was just a horrible person. I mean, obviously. Thank you. In the years since Colt and Molly disappeared, the OSBI has followed up on every tip, and they can't move forward unless new information is found. The current sheriff of Love County won't talk about the case, even though one of the main things he ran his campaign on was that he was going to get to the bottom of what happened to Colt and Molly. There are two separate rewards being offered, totaling $45,000 for information that leads to where Molly and Colt are. In January 2021, so just this past January, Molly was officially declared dead by the court. In November 2021, so just last month, a search warrant was pending in Love County to search property off of Pike Road. It was for an area that had never been searched. If a judge signs it, it will Next, go to tribal police. Oh, so it's a um, reservation? Tribal land? Possibly, yes. That's what I read, that it was tribal land. So I'm going to go with it. Well, you know what other case we did? We did the case of Karina Saunders, and that was in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. That was in regards to methamphetamine. Karina, 17. There was, she was last seen on a reservation at a casino, remember? Yes. And she was found, unfortunately, in pieces. Yeah. So Oklahoma has this meth thing going on. And there must be a lot of tribal land. She was 2011. Oh, man. Just a couple of years before this. Yeah. If you guys haven't listened to it, it's episode... 111. One, 111. 111. Yeah, but there was, it was talk about tribal land, too. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking. That That's why it has to be cleared by the tribal police. But land's not going to be searched anytime soon because the judge denied the warrant. Oh. Stating there's no evidence that a crime has been committed. The current Love County Sheriff issued a statement that voiced frustration that the warrant wasn't granted. So maybe he's really on board with trying to find out what happened to Molly and Colt, even though he doesn't want to talk about it in the media. If you have information related to Molly Miller or Colt Haynes's case, please contact the OSBI tip hotline at 1-800-522-8017. And I have to say that one of the reasons the authorities, so I'm thinking like the FBI and the OSBI, believe that people haven't come forward with information is that they're still scared of Joe Russell. And maybe some of them were doing things at that time in their life that they regret. Mm -hmm. Because they do believe that someone knows something. Oh, absolutely. In a small town like that, it, it takes many, in my humble opinion, to cover something like that up. Right. And to not squeal yet, probably family. Probably. Has to be. Has to be. And well, and Colby squealed. Yes. Actually, so. I mean, he said he knew for sure that they were in the lake. Sounds good to me. I know. I know. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you to Leah. I hate Unsolved, but I, I love know. them at the same time. I'm pretty sure this might be one of the only Unsolved 
I've done for our podcast because I just hate them because they're so unsatisfying. But I think it's important because it's such a fresh case that maybe someone listening may know someone who knows someone who knows someone that knows something. (laughs) So they can have closure for the family. Yeah, I would love for that to happen. And I mean, what a terrible thing to have happen. To to, not know. To not know. It just must tear her family apart and tear Colt's family apart. I mean, he had a little boy. It's just terrible. Anyway, please, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe slash follow button that you're listening to us on. And we have shout outs. We do. We have shout outs for our Apple channel subscribers and for our Patreons who help support us. And if you want more information on how to do that, And I'm going to tell you, there's over a hundred exclusive episodes on our Patreon page right now. If you love us so much that you want more, you can go to patreon.com slash TNT Crimes. You deserve it. So let's do the shout outs. Let's take a minute to recognize those that support us. Yes. You do the honors, Tanya. Okay. So hold your applause. There are two Apple subscribers I would like to recognize, Judy and Larry. And then our Patreon supporters, Colleen D, Christina R., Jamie H., Michelle K., WLK, Tanya P., James R., Vanessa K., Natalie C., Allie P., Hillary, Vicki C., Shorts8844, there's another Natalie, Natalie C. H., Jamie H., we have another Jamie, Jamie H. O. Not Jamie Ho. No, not Jamie Ho, just the two first letters of her last name, and Dana H., I also want to give a special round of applause to our editor, Joe, from Clovercrest Media. Thank you, Joe, for making us sound so lovely. You rock. If you guys are interested, check us out on our social media at Hardcore True Crime. That's Facebook and Instagram. We have some amazing true crime merchandise on our website, crimesconsequences.com. I promise you'll find something you love there. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I think that's it. I mean, that was a lot. It. That is a lot. We did a lot of talking this time. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting, and I had a lot of questions for you. I know, and I wish I had more answers. You did well. Thank you. So until our next episode. Don't kill each other. Bye. Bye. Bye.